This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at media management for video editing. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, we take a close look at Final Cut Library Manager from Arctic Whiteness. Website is arcticwhiteness.com. The basic package is free and it's $28 US for all the advanced features. The key features include a very tight integration with Apple Final Cut Pro 10. It is the lowest price of all three applications. Provides high-speed search across multiple libraries, multiple events, media, and keywords. It highlights libraries that have missing media. You can create library templates, duplicate, move, and delete libraries. And for me, the favorite features are to quickly see library sizes and delete generated media. Let's take a look at the demo. I'm going to quit out of Final Cut. You don't have to, but I tend to find that it's easier to quit Final Cut when I'm manipulating multiple libraries, so we'll quit out of Final Cut. This is the interface to Final Cut Library Manager. On the left are all the hard disks that it knows about, whether they're online or not. If the text is light, the drive is attached to my computer, turned on and online. If the text is gray, it was attached at one time to my system, but it's not attached now. This too is a database. It keeps track of stuff that it once knew about, even if it's not online at the moment. If I select RAID 5, everything in blue is a library which is stored on that RAID. The way that I operate is RAID 5 holds all of my webinar projects. RAID 1 holds all of my other training and digital production buzz projects. The second drive is what I use for live events like webinars. And I never put libraries on my, my boot drive, so there's not a whole lot on the, the Macintosh HD. If I click here, I can see, oh look, there's all these different webinars here. Well, let's deselect and just work with what we've got. If I click the name column, it automatically alphabetizes in ascending or descending order by the name of the library. And notice this alert here. It says there's three missing files on the second drive. If I click the list, it says I'm missing these three files. When I go to Final Cut, I'm going to need to relink. So it tells me, have you got all the media that you need to be able to do something with this library? If I twirl down, let's go to a webinar here. Let's search in the opposite order. Okay, here's a webinar where stuff is offline. And here's a webinar where something is online. Let's twirl it down. There are my events. Notice the four stars for the library, single star for the event. When I twirl down projects, these are the projects that I have. And it shows me that everything is online. Not only can I see the library, I can look inside the library to see the events. I can look inside an event to see the projects and the individual projects. In fact, what's really cool, if I do a search up here, say type 225, it finds every webinar, every event, every project that contains 225 somewhere in the file name. Twirl it down and look at that. It was founded in the project name for that particular webinar. Okay, let's clear this. I can search on library. I can search on event. I can search on project or media or finder comments or exported projects. If I click here, it says this is a list of all the projects that you exported from that library because Final Cut keeps track of exports. The way that I work is I export a file, then I will move it to a separate storage location, which breaks the link that Final Cut has to the exported project, which in this case doesn't bother me. But it's nice to know that it will track it if I want it to. The plus key allows me to add finder comment to that particular library. But to me, the real power is over here. If I click total size, it automatically sorts my libraries based upon which is the biggest. I can then look at these libraries and say, let me set it to fixed because it's easier to see. I've got 6.8 gigabytes of space tied up with render files. For instance here, gray is source media, blue is optimized files, purple are analysis files, green are render files. 
So if I wanted to get rid of the render files with this particular project, I click here, and now I'm removing three gigs of media that I don't need. It's easy, easy to say, okay, let's just get rid of the generated media for these files. And by clicking the checkboxes, I'm going to get rid of 12 gigabytes of render files. Now, this is not a problem because if Final Cut needs it, it just recreates the generated media. So there's no harm, no foul if you get rid of it. Final Cut Library Manager makes sure that you don't accidentally delete source media. You only delete the media that can be recovered if for some reason you delete the wrong thing. Then you click the broom down here, does a clean sweep. I want to delete it completely. And that quickly it's gone. And my list is retabulated based upon size currently. See this fixed and proportional? When it's set to fixed, all of my files have the same size, horizontal. When I click it to proportional, this actually gives me a sense of what difference I'm going to make by deleting the media. The gray bar indicates 156 gigabytes is taken up with source files. I can't delete them. 86 gigabytes, 34 gigabytes. Okay, so if I delete the render files in this 895 megabyte fish demo, and I get rid of 800 megabytes, it sounds like a lot, but when I compare it to everything, I'm really, pff, doesn't make a whole lot of difference one way or the other. I have, if I deleted all of my generated media, I would delete 20 gigabytes of data, which, when I'm looking at something which takes 160 gigabytes, may or may not be meaningful, but I love the power this gives me to be able to see where is my space taken, how do I need to allocate space? When can I get rid of generated media? Because remember, Final Cut will always bring it back. And then down here, it shows you what potential you have for space savings. Click a gear icon. You can open this library in Final Cut. You can open it all by itself in Final Cut. You can duplicate it, move it, send it to the trash. But this is the one that I like a lot. Every webinar that I edit has exactly the same event structure has the same projects it's that the content is different but the setup is the same i've found a system that works for me and why recreate it every week when i know i've got a system that works so i'll create a template and then i'll just say time to edit a new webinar go right to the template and not have to worry about setting all of that up it just saves time i can create templates and then create new libraries from the templates directly from inside Final Cut Library Manager. The developer is Arctic Whiteness. Website is arcticwhiteness.com. The basic package is free. It's $28 US for the advanced features. Every Final Cut 10 editor needs to have the free package. Doesn't cost anything. And just being able to see what your libraries are makes it totally worthwhile. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at media management for video editing. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 227. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,600 movies, hundreds of hours, in-depth and easy to view. Plus, premium members can now access sample media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it several times a month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. Thanks.